Welcome to the session. Today I will discuss IR spectroscopy and its applications. Okay. In continuation of our study, you can see this is the IR spectrophotometer and it is called interferogram means the signal format in IR spectrophotometer. If the Fourier transform will transform the signal format into the spectrum. So, it is called interferogram, it is the spectrum we will see in the IR spectroscopy and it is the IR spectrophotometer. Okay. Next. So, how can you do the IR spectroscopy? You need to use some plates or cell. This is the container. Uh, to obtain a, an IR spectrum, the sample must be placed in a container or cell that is transparent in the IR region of the spectrum. Sodium chloride or salt plates are a common means of placing the sample in the light beam of the instrument. These plates are made of sodium chloride or kevia, potassium bromide and must be stored in a water free environment. Okay, this is the some cell or container, we need to use like this place and you need to keep some compound on the plates. These plates are made of sodium chloride or KBR. You can see here. See, this is the plates we are using. You need to use gloves and you cannot keep our fingers or hand on the plate. And you need to use the compound on the plate and we need to keep like this. Afterwards, you need to keep on the container and keep in the instrument. This instrument, after switch on, after passing through IR spectrum radiation, we will get this spectrum. Okay? So, we need to use every time after use, clean the plates and keep in the desiccator, means water free environment. So, these are the IR radiation sources. So, for the IR spectroscopy, we need some IR radiation. So, IR radiation, we need, what are the sources we have? First one is tungsten filament lamp. Second one is nearest blower. So, nearest blower is a combination or mixture of zirconium, yttrium, thorium oxides. Okay? We can heat it up to 1000 to 1800 degrees centigrade and the radiation will get around 7100 centimeter in our up to 1.4 micrometers. And another source is global, global source. It is a silicon carbide rod and it is heated up to 1300 to 1700 degrees centigrade and the radiation will get 5200 centimeter in our that is up to 1.9 micrometers. Next one is mercury R. In mercury R, we have two types of wavelengths you can get. If you want shorter wavelength, we can use heated quad. And if you want longer wavelength, we can use mercury plasma. And another one is nichrome wire or coil. It is called incandescent lamp. And if you want to heat it by passage of current to 1100 degrees centigrade, you can get higher radiation. So, these are the different types of IR radiation sources. But most important ones are most popular use are nearness blower or tungsten filament lamp or incandescent lamp. Okay. Come to IR stretching frequency and application like that. What are the factors that are affecting IR stretching frequency? So, already we studied this one. Hooke's law. What? Hooke's law tells about that nu bar is equal to, nu bar means IR stretching frequency which is measured in wave number 1 by 2 pi c here c also there. Root of k by mu where k is force constant and mu is reduced mass which is equal to m1, m1, m2 by m1 plus m2. So, Mu bar is directly proportional to k. Force constant means elasticity of the bond or stiffness of the bond. So, another one is masses of atoms at the end, end of a bond. That is, springs connecting small weights vibrate faster than springs with larger weight. See, 
the mass of CH is less than mass of CC. So, springs collecting smaller weights vibrate faster than springs with larger weight. Here, CC is more weight than CH. Again, OH is less weight than CO. So, OH is greater frequency than C single bond O. Type of bond, force constant, shorter, stronger spring, faster, vibrate faster than long, weak spring. C triple bond C is greater than C double bond C is greater than C single bond C. So, here the bond length is shorter and C single bond C is larger. So, C triple bond C short bond length is greater than C double bond C, greater than C single bond C. So, this is the higher stretching frequency order. Shorter, stronger spring, vibrate faster than longer and weak spring. You can see here. See in this diagram, this is the like bond spring. It is 50 gram and 100 gram and 250 gram. See the bond length or spring length. Here, when you use smaller weight, the weight length is shorter. If you increase the weight, the length becomes larger. If you increase some more weight, the length becomes more larger. So, when you increase the weight, the spring becomes larger. So, the bond length becomes increased. Whenever bond length increases, what happens? The higher stretching frequency decreases. Okay. You can see here, this is the typical graph. The higher range is from 4000 to 500 centimeter inverse. And we will see here, OH, NH, CH will, will absorb at around 3500 or 3300 like this. Anyway, it is around 2000, more than 2800 to 4000 centimeter inverse. Again, this is alkyl range, 3 triple bond M and 3 triple bond C. The range is from 2000 to 2800. This is about alkyl range, C double bond O, C double bond M, C double bond C. We will absorb here. The range is from 1500 to 2000. Generally, we will call less than 1500 centimeter inverse is called fingerprint region. We will see the importance of fingerprint region later. So, when you, the wave number is order is like this, so it is higher order, higher energy and it is lower energy. And we can see C single bond C and C single bond O also will absorb in this region. So, this is the energy increasing order. Okay? We can see some distinguish of compounds, infrared spectrum of some people may ask, how can you distinguish one exine and one exine by using IR spectroscopy? Okay, so you can see these are the two. Okay, these are the two spectrums. This is one exine and it is one exine. Okay. How can you distinguish one exine and one exine by IR spectroscopy? We can see from previous slide, C triple bond C will absorb at 2200 cm inverse, whereas in exine, 2000, at 2200 cm inverse, there is no peak here. Okay? So, C triple bond C absorption, absorption is absent in the one exine. And if you see triple bond CH peak, alkynic peak, we can see here at 3300 centimeter inverse. Whereas 3300 centimeter inverse, there is no peak. So, we, the typical absorption for exile, we can see 3 triple bond C at 2200 centimeter inverse and 3300 centimeter inverse, we can see triple bond CH. If you go to all hygiene, we can see at 1600 centimeter inverse, C double bond C absorption and then to around 3050 centimeter inverse, we can see C double bond C H, this C double bond C or double bond C H at around 3000 centimeter inverse. This is C H we will see in both the compound, single bond C H, SP3CH. 
whereas double bond CH will appear at 3000 and C double bond C at 1600 cm inverse whereas triple bond CH will appear at 3300 cm inverse and C triple bond C at 2200 cm like this we can easily distinguish two organic molecules uh, ha are having two different functional groups by IR spectroscopy you can see other example see how can you distinguish one exene and one exonol by IR spectroscopy see This is one exene and this is one hexanol. Okay. So again, we know that exene C double bond C absorption at 1600 cm inverse and double bond CH at around 3000 cm inverse. Whereas for hexanol, we can see OH stretching broad signal around 3300 cm inverse. Whereas in here, there is no broad signal appear more than 3000 cm inverse for the exene whereas for exonol we can see the broad peak around 3300 cm inverse which is a characteristic peak for OH okay or alcohol and we, also, we can also see CO stretching frequency around 1100 cm inverse which is for C single bond OH stretching so Whereas at, at 1100 or 1200 cm, the peak is absent here. So, the characteristic peaks for alcohol you can see is OH at 3300 cm inverse and C single bond O at 1100 cm inverse. Whereas for XZ, we can see C double bond C 1600 cm, the peak is absent here and double bond CH at 3000 cm inverse. Like this, we can, we can distinguish any two pair of compounds. Okay. Hey, next one. Okay, next compound is how can you distinguish butanol and two butanol? Okay, these are two carbonyl compounds. This is this is butanol and it is butanol ok here the div, it is ketone and it is aldehyde we can see this we can see C double bond of stretching frequency here and here generally we will study that ketone has lesser IR stretching frequency why we have aldehyde here inductive group inductive effect of two alkyl group and here again and another thing is hyperconjugation also so C double bond of stretching frequency is little lesser than lesser in ketones than aldehyde so the absorption is around 1680 or 1690 per ketone for the aldehyde you can see around 1700 centimeter inverse and another thing is if you have aldehyde you can see two peaks at around 2700 to 2800 these two peaks this is due to Fermi resonance okay due to Fermi resonance for CH stretching for the CH peak we can see two peaks like doublet at 2700 to 2800 it is the characteristic peak for aldehyde whereas at 2700 to 2800 centimeter there is no peak for the ketone since CH peak is absent in ketone this peak CH ok this is due to Fermi resonance and next one ok we can we will see about OH and NH stretching both of these are occur around 3300 cm inverse but they look different ok sometimes may, you may confuse which is OH or which is NH stretching, stretching so both of these occur around 3300 cm if it is free OH maybe free OH or free NH like that it may 
obtained more than 3500 or 600 centimeter inverse but most of the times you will get at 3300 centimeter inverse why because it is due to bonded hydrogen bonding is there the peak is decreased the value is decreased to 3300 centimeter inverse and and another thing is the peak uh, appears as broad signal okay we will see later the another thing is alcohol oh is broad with rounded tip primary i mean rnh2 is broad with two sharp spikes we can see later secondary i mean here there is only one nh is broad with one sharp spike spike and no signal for tertiary amine because there is no hydrogen okay so alcohol oh is broad with rounded tape and primary amine is broad with two sharp spike secondary amine is broad with one sharp spike and no signal for tertiary amine because there is no hydrogen okay we'll see here okay it is a typical alcohol spectrum it is one butanol Okay, one butanol you can see here at the, around 3300 centimeter inverse there is a broad signal appear. This is this, this appear of peaks is around is about CH stretching and this is CO stretching. Okay. Other bending vibrations are mixed up, mixed up and we cannot say clearly. So I have spectrum of alcohol broad, intense OH stretching absorption around 3300 centimeter inverse the broad shape is due to the hydrogen bonding interactions of alcohol molecule okay if you see dipropyl amine whereas for dipropyl amine we can see here for NH stretching we can see some spike here not like broad uh, signal whereas for NH stretching it is only secondary amine will get only one signal it is like spike it is CH the iron spectrum of amine show a broad NH stretching absorption centered around 3300 centimeter if you have two, um, two NH we will set, get two spikes okay you can see here amide It is a butyl amide, butyl amide. It, here there is NH2 and there is 2 NH, 2 NH, and so we will get 2 peaks or 2 spikes. And this is for 1630 to 1600 centimeter inverse, 1660 centimeter, it corresponds to C double bond O stretching. Strong absorption for the C double bond O at 1660 centimeter inverse and there will NH absorption at around 3300 centimeter inverse it is typical spectrum of amide okay. okay a closer look at carbonyl compounds carbonyl compounds we can see C double bond O stretching but variety of compounds okay C double bond O is very important uh, functional group we, and we can easily distinguish by IR spectroscopy C double bond O is you can see in uh, carbonyls like aldehyde, ketone, ester, anhydride, acid halide, acid like that. Okay, if you see aldehyde, so you can see aldehyde. Simple aldehyde will appear at 70, 30 centimeter inverse. If you if you take alpha beta unsaturation, see the value decreases to 17.5 cm since if you have conjugation alpha beta unsaturation the C double bond O getting C single bond O character due to conjugation here we will get C single bond O character means double bond becomes partial single bond character the value is decreased bond length increased again so Benjali head due to resonance from the phenyl group the value again decreases and if you take ketones and if you take ketone it is pentagon 
it is around 750 cm inverse so uh, other things you can say from hexagon to proper norm the value is increased due to ring strength for the pentagon it is 750 cm whereas for the acetone it is 750 cm it is due to inductive effect cl3 both and if it is alpha beta unsaturated ketone the value is again decreased up to 1685 cm inverse. Okay, whereas for histopenone, the value is around 1680 or 85 cm due to resonance. Okay. For the ester, normal ester will appear around 1735 or 1745 cm inverse. Whereas for the alpha beta unsaturation, again the value is decreased up to 1750 cm inverse. Whereas for the for middle range, the value is around 1715 cm. Whereas if O is present here, the value increases up to 1770 cm inverse, like in acetate. It is methyl benzoate. Okay, due to conjugation. Okay, these are the typical examples present in different from different compounds having C double bond O. Okay, so you can see what are the applications of I R spectroscopy. First one is identification of substances. To compare the spectrum, no two samples will have identical I R spectrum. Okay. Criteria sample and reference must be tested in identical conditions like physical state, temperature, solvent, etc. If you use the same physical parameters like state, temperature, solvent, no two samples will have will have identical IR spectrum. Okay, if the sample is same, you can get the same spectrum. Okay. The fingerprint region. The fingerprint region is around 40, less than 1400 centimeter inverse. That is from 1400 to 600 centimeter inverse. Small differences in structure and constitution of molecule result in significant changes in the peaks in this region. And this region helps to identify an unknown compound. Okay? Small differences. That is structural isomers or positional isomers. Structurally closed molecules can easily find out in the fingerprint region okay two to no two spectrums will be same or every spectrum is unique for each compound okay we can see here if you take two three dimethyl butane and it is two methyl butane if you take If you take functional group or uh, group peak range region, the peaks are same, similar. Okay. Whereas this region, typical fingerprint region, we can see the peaks are vary. Okay. We can do dimethyl or bending vibration here, single methyl group. So the peaks are vary in the fingerprint region. So we can easily distinguish these compounds are different. Okay. And you can also identify the substance. You can see this is benzene, this is benzene peak, benzene spectrum. You can see this is unknown spectrum. If you match uh, the two spectrum and with the same conditions, you can take reference compound and the unknown compound. If you match the spectrum, maybe the compounds are same, same. like this. You can easily find out. So other things, studying progress of reactions. Okay, while we keep, we can keep some reactions and how to monitor the reactions by, we can monitor by IR spectrum, spectrum spectroscopy also by studying progress of reactions. Observing rate of disappearance of characteristic absorption band in reactant. Rate of increasing absorption bands in products of a particular product, example OH or C double bond O, like that. Measure the degree of polymerization in chemical compounds. Okay, degree of polymerization for measuring degree of polymerization also. IR spectroscopy is useful. Determination of molecular structure. Used along with other spectroscopic techniques. Okay. 
uh, for the determination we need to use nmr mass like that you need to use other spectroscopy technique also so anyway Somewhat it is also helpful. Identification is done based on position of absorption bands in the spectrum. Example, C double bond O at 17, 17 centimeter inverse. So we can easily uh, dig it out for the characteristic absorption at particular value. You can see the, whether the functional group is present or not. If you have 17, 17 centimeter inverse, we can see some band or peak at particular uh, wave number or frequency, we can tell the functional group is present. Absence of band of a particular region, particular group indicates absence of that group in the compound. If you have, if you don't have any peak at 3300 centimeter inverse or 3500 centimeter inverse, that means you, 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 you don't have OHRNA stretching frequency. Okay, like that. Absence of some peak will tell absence of that group like that. Okay, detection of impurities. You can also useful for the detection of impurities. IR spectrum spectroscopy is useful. Determined by comparing sample spectrum with the spectrum of pure reference compound. Example, ketone impurities in alcohol. So, by comparing sample spectra with the sample of pure reference compound, we can know how the impurities detect or we can easily detect the impurities. Example, ketone impurity in alcohol. So, we already know alcohol is present at 3300 cm as a broad peak and C single bond white at 1100 cm as Whereas, for the ketone, we know that the C double bond O absorption at 1680 or 1700 cm. If you see any 1700 cm, any peak, that means there is a ketone impurity in the spectrum, like that. Detection is favored when impurity possesses a strong band in IR region where the main substance do not possess a band. Example, impurity in beeswax wax with petroleum wax. Okay? Okay, for the quantification also it is useful. For the protein quantification, so, IR spectroscopy is one of the most best established, well established techniques for the analysis of protein structure. In protein, amino acids are covalently linked via amide bonds, that is peptide bond. Okay, it absorbs in multiple regions of the mid IR spectrum. By measuring amide bonds in protein chain, we can accurately quantify the intrinsic component of every protein. So, how many peptide bonds or how many um, amino acids are linked, we can easily tell by IR spectroscopy. That is called protein quantification, means how much quantity it has. And other applications we will see determination of unknown contaminants in industry using FTIR, biomedical studies of human hair to identify disease state. This is recent approach. Okay, it is useful in research also. It is also used in forensic analysis in both criminal and civil cases in determining the blood alcohol content, etc. Identify order taste components of food, determine atmospheric pollutants from atmosphere itself, examination of old painting, and also for the study of isomerism in organic chemistry, which are type of isomerism, ketone in all geometrical isomerism, confirmation analysis, all this we can study by uh, your spectroscopy. These are the different types of application. Okay, what are the strengths and limitations for IR spectroscopy? IR alone cannot determine a structure. Okay, this is important. IR, IR is very much useful, but only IR we cannot determine the structure. We need to use other spectroscopic techniques also like UV, NMR, MOS, like that. Okay, some signals may be ambiguous, means some combination weak bands, weak bands, over you can see all weak, some things may be ambiguous. The functional group is usually indicated, okay, the functional group indicated. The absence of a signal is definite proof that the functional group is absent, okay. The absence of signal at that particular region means that functional group is absent, we can know easily. Correspondence with a known sample IR spectrum confirms the identity of the compound. From the known IR spectrum, we, also, we can also confirm the identity of the compound. Okay. 
Okay, this, uh, this is about the ion spectroscopy and application, different types of spectroscopy. How can you distinguish different types of compounds like that? We can see some simple exercise. By this exercise, having some reaction mechanism in the mind, you can easily solve and this by using IR spectroscopy. Okay, see. As a project, Mary was given an unknown compound A, okay, unknown compound A, and told to perform the reaction step listed below. At the end of each reaction step, she was told to submit the major product for microanalysis. Okay, major product for microanalysis. In order to obtain the molecular formula and to also determine its infrared spectrum. The structure of each compound was to be identified. Can you help us solve the structure and pass this class? Okay. Mary teacher or Mary college, they given a scheme and reactant and told her to do these reactions with the help of some conditions and take the major product and solve the products, identify the structure by molecular formula and given IR spectrum, the spectrum are on the pages follow. What are the reactions? What are the reagents? And we need to tell we what is A, what is B, what is C and what is D and what is C. We need to help Mary for her exercise. Okay, by using important thing IR having some reaction mechanism in the mind. Okay. We we'll see in C8H6. Okay. Convert into C8H8O. Okay. All of you know that DBE calculation, double bond equivalent. So for the C8H6, what is the formula for this molecule? Compound C plus 1 minus H by 2. DBE is double bond equivalent. C is 8 plus 1 minus 6 by 2 so 7 9 minus 6 by 2 3 is equal to 6 so, so having 6 means the double bond equivalence is 6 means a large number means there may be a phenyl group okay there may be phenyl phenyl group means 3 double bonds and 1 ring already 4 4 unsaturation or double bond equivalence 4 compared to one more, two more remain. So, 4, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2 is there. And when you convert into C8H8O, okay, we will see later. So, there, may, there is 2 is there, means 2 more double bonds are there. If you see A to B conversion with C, Transformed by H2SO4, HGSO4, H2O. It is a uh, very important transformation. If you see alkyne to ketone conversion, the hydration of alkynes to form ketones. Okay. This is the transformation from alkyne. Okay. Alkyne to ketone. The hydration of alkyne to ketone. First, by, by, by using H2, HT plus 2, hydroxylation of alkyne carry take place and afterwards ketoenal tautomerism to get ketone. This is well known reaction. So, this is maybe, okay, this is propyne. You can see there are two double bonds here for the alkane and the molecular formula is also satisfied C8H6 5 plus 1 6 so this may, might be alkyne and afterwards by using H2SO4, HDSO4 and H2O this is a transformation of alkyne to ketone okay ketone we can see the IR spectrum also okay so, what, what we taught, what we assume, this may be alkyne. 
you can see it you can confirm by eye spectroscopy what we studied see through the one see will appear at 2100 so it is present and triple bond ch will appear at at 3300 cm reward so it must be uh, alkyne so this is c triple bond ch phenyl acetylene this this is about ch like that and it is may be c double bond c in aromatic reason but the important thing is the functional group 3300 per triple bond ch and 2100 per c triple bond c okay this is this okay nishan Acetylene, phenyl acetylene, in presence of H2SO4, HDSO4, water, we will get C8H8O. So, it might be ketone. This is hydration of alkane reaction. Okay? This is ketone. You can see the DBE for this also. 8 plus 1 mine, minus 8 by 2 9 minus 4 is equal to 5 so this is 4 and 1 5 so and for the spectrum we can see 1686 absorption or typical C double bond O P and we didn't find any triple bond P here 2200 or 3100 300 so Phenyl acetylene is converted to histophenone by using these conditions. So the B, the B compound might be histophenone. Okay, this is 1686 is absorption per C double bond O. Okay. Now what happened for Now, we know that ketone is there and it is on hydrogenation given some condition nickel hydrogen like that. Nickel. So we can see here 3350. We see broad P. It, it uh, gives information that, that there is OHP. So and 1650 there is no sharp P. So absence of C double bond O and presence of OHP indicates there is a reduction of keto group. That is C H O H and C H three. We can see the molecular formula C six eight C eight H five eight nine ten C H ten O C eight H ten O and we can see the DBE also double bond equivalent for eight plus one nine minus ten by two. Right, 9 minus 5, 4. So, this 4 corresponds to benzene ring. So, upon reduction, the keto group converts to alcohol. So, presence of alcohol can easily detected by OH stretching frequency at 3350 cm and 1100 C single bond O also. Okay. So, afterwards, What we have in the hand? CHOHCH3 will undergo tocyl chloride and NaCl reduction. We 
reaction. So, OH will undergo tosylation and it is easy leading and afterwards cyanation with sodium cyanide to get CH, CN and CH3. Whether it is correct or not, we can see the first, we can see the molecular formula, say 6, 7, 8, 9, C9, correct, H5, 6, N9, H9, and N, C9, H9, N. Yes. Okay, C9, H9, 9, N, and we can see the DBE. DBE for the nitrogen compound C plus 1 minus H by 2 and plus N by 2. See how much N 9 plus 1 minus 9 by 2 plus 1 by 2. Okay? Then minus 8 by 2, 4, it is 5. You can see. Sorry, not by 6, 10 minus 4, 6. Here, 4 and for the 9 train, C triple bond and 2. So, total 6. You can see whether nitrile is there, 2240. Two thousand two hundred forty. it corresponds to nitrile B. Okay? The and OH peak is absent here. So, OH is converted to nitrile in the presence of tosyl chloride and sodium cyanide. Okay. And afterwards, what we have? What we have in the hand? Nitrile. Again, reduction like L hydrogenation, we will get CH, CH3, nitrile converted to amine. Okay, see, this is reduction C9, H13, N. We can calculate and we will get C9, H13, N. And you can see two spikes per NH2 and we don't have CN stretching here, absent at 2200 cm inverse and the DBE also you can calculate 9 plus 1, 10 minus 13 by 2 plus nitrogen 1 by 2. Okay, 10 minus 12 by 2, 6, 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. So, this corresponds to benzene rate. So, the nitrile will reduce it to amine. Okay, this is E compound. Okay, so, sorry. the overall scheme is for the Mary is she taken in a discipline. First step, she converted to ketone using hydration by Hg H2SO4. And afterwards, this is A and this is B. And afterwards, she converted to upon reduction she converted to alcohol. You can see this is C and afterwards from sodium cyanation by using tosyl chloride she converted to nitrile. It is T and afterwards again reduction this is 
So the overall transformation is, and we can see every step you can monitor by IR spectroscopy. In IR spectroscopy, first step you are seeing C triple bond and C and triple bond C, triple bond C H, and the next step you can find out the we can find out carbonyl stretching, and the next step is we have seen C O H stretching, and next one again we have seen the nitrile. And the last step is in the amine. This is a 3300 and 2200 centimeter inverse. For the C double bond O, it is around 1680 cm inverse. For the OH, we can see 3300 cm inverse. For the nitrate, again at 2200 cm inverse. For the amine, we can see at two spikes at 3300 and 3250. Okay, this is, I guess you can easily find out or monitor the reactions by using or by the help of IR spectroscopy. Okay, thank you very much.